Hello, my name is Stella Chelangat Mutai. I'm from Kenya and work with the International Fund for Agriculture Development. But my co author, Dr. Ling Chang, is from the University of Twente and ITC in Netherlands. Our research paper entitled Post Fire Hazard Detection Using Allo Stu Radar and Alansat Optical Imagery. Our analysis will mainly focus on background objective, methods, results, discussion, and conclusion. I go straight to the background. The effects of wildfire has attracted a lot of recognition both globally and locally. And this has been because of especially the increased fire in Australia over the years. And there has been a lot of studies that have been done in Australia focusing on the factors that are influencing the spread of wildfires and also how to mitigate the wildfires. However, few have gotten into the understanding of uh, analysis in affecting how variation in geographical aspect of an area and the type of tree structure influence fire severity estimation. Our main objective is to analyze the use of satellites satellite data and comparison to the optical imagery in identification of both burnt and unburnt forest fires patches. Our specific objectives will, will only be three. One, to develop a forest fire burn severity map. This will explain the levels of fire that are existing. Number two, we'll explore the sensitivity of radar that, that mainly includes polarimetric decomposition and backscatter intensity in identification of both burnt and unburnt areas. And last but not three, we'll compare the degree of spectral contrast, both looking at spectral sensitivity and polarimetric sensitivity between both the burnt and the unburnt areas. Our methodology was involved was mainly had four steps. One was the pre-processing steps in both radar and optical. For radar, we looked at radiometric calibration, terrain, geocoding, and speckle filter. However, for optical data, we looked at radiometric correction and geometric correction. When we looked at the band sensitive spectral in spectral composite that was the second one it mainly focused on vegetation uh, indices that's the normalized band ratio indices then we looked at the support vector machine that was the contextual classifier that was used the mach on the machine learning algorithm that was used in our analysis and la and second last we looked at the training data process and here we looked at the methods that we used to obtain both our training set and our validation sets and last but not least was to, to validate uh, our training sets by using our accuracy assessment and validation data set. When you go to our methods that we used first in terms of optical based spectral indices, we, know we use the normalized band ratio indices. And here we mainly looked at this, uh, we looked at uh, pre-fire and post-fire images and we subtracted the two. And how we also used the United States Geological Survey, that's the global index for the vegetation indices of normalized band ratio. And we calculated ours into four classes, uh, mainly unburnt, low burnt, moderate burnt, and highly burnt. And later we went to reclassify them into only two classes. So for the unburnt class, it remained unburnt. However, for the low, moderate, and high classes, it remained as burnt severe, high like burnt patches. La secondly, in one of our methods, we use support vector machine. Why did we choose to use the support vector machine? This is because it, it enables us to find an optimal hyperplane that maximizes the margin between two defined classes. Looking at our two classes that were mainly, uh, mainly um, two classes that were mainly burnt and unburnt classes, it was difficult, especially at the edges of the boundary of our polygons, to differentiate which phases were burnt and unburnt. And so the support vector machine acted as our very best and because it utilizes very few training samples. We also used, because it has three kernels, the radial, the polynomial, uh, the radial and the polynomial kernels, we did a random test of values and also using the para parameter C, C and so which is a regularization parameter and are able to settle for the radial basis function that's the rbf as our main kernel in support vector machine and then when we go to when you move to our next slide that is uh when we move to our next slides that is uh our validation our sampling sites for training were obtained through visual interpretation of images that is before and after the fire and and also the use of the polygon vector shifters provided by the victoria database was also acting as our training samples then our training and tests were separated through random sampling procedure whereby two thirds of the total area were classified as training samples and a third were classified as test samples.
Then when we go to describe our study area, our study area was a part of Victoria, Australia. We looked at a part that has uh, the main reason was why we chose this particular area in Victoria, Australia was because of four main reasons. One is because it recently experienced a fire that is a bushfire and that had highly intense fire. Number two is because of presence of the image and images available for both radar and optical that were having the same timeline dates. Number three is because the area has over time experienced intense fire over time consistently and that became a suitable study and number four because of its varying geographical phenomena that would be suitable for study analysis and then the images that we used the images of the data sets that we used are defined in this slide data description whereby our images for the pre-fire were collected both around October or around uh, around July that is for pre-fire data set for both Landsat and Allos and then post-fire data set was that one for October that was for both Allos and Landsat images and that was good for Landsat it has a resolution of 30 by 30 and for Allos it has a spatial resolution of 10 by 10 and then for our Allos it was collected in a uh, ascending order and then when we go directly into comparing the pre and the post fire that is going directly into our result when you look just at the raw images of pre and post fire of Allos it's difficult to see physically the differences between both images however when you look at the images when you look at the images in terms of their backscatter values you'll realize that the images before the fire had a high backscatter value of 63.01 that's a volume scatter however after the fire it had a value of 47.13 so there was a reduction in the scattering and that could tell you we increased that that particular area had experienced fire and there was elimination of leaves at that particular area and then as we continue, we also did a comparison of raw images between before and after the fire of both Landsat 8, putting a band combination of RGB 752, and one could clearly see there was a difference, especially in the, that particular area of both before the fire and after the fire. When we go to comparison after we performed our normalized band ratio index, we found, a, we found that our area had, when we compare the size and the extent of changes before between the fire before and after the images, we compared and we saw that uh, our area had four, four classified uh, classes that were unburnt, low severity, moderate, moderate to high, and high severity. And so these classes were very key for us as they were able to form training samples between burnt and unburnt areas. The unburnt areas remained unburnt, however, for the other four classes that's low, moderate, moderate to high, and high severity were classified as burnt patches. Then when we go to classified, uh, when we do did classification or SVM classification of our optical and radar satellite, one could clearly see there was a difference in between. If you look at the optical data, it could tell that most of the fires, uh, that most of the patches within the our, opt our vector shape file were burnt. However, this is because of spectral classification and thus it only takes the vegetation crown fill. However, when you look when you look at uh, SAR data, you could see there was a difference in between and and you could see there was a difference in between as much of it was not really burnt and that highly could tell this is because it utilizes the removal of crown leaves and branches while for this one it just looks at vegetation fill that's crown closure for the optical data that's the difference another second difference that we also notified was that the areas that appeared as um and burnt a lowly burnt in optical data were burnt in sad data and that was also another difference that we noticed and this could also be because of the same effect that uh, optical data utilizes crown closure while uh, or while radar data re utilizes the removal of crown leaves and branches then when you go to the classification results, it was also key for us as it assured us that in both radar and optical, it utilizes the ability to classify both burnt and unburnt patches in forest fire mapping. As an accuracy assessment, they showed um, 
high values were obtained for both for burnt and unburnt, looking at both the producer accuracy and accuser accuracy of Landsat 8 and ALOS 2. The kappa coefficient for Landsat 8 was 0 0.8 and for ALOS was 0 0.89. So for ALOS was a bit higher compared to Landsat 8. And this was very accurate and key for us because it showed the ability for both images to classify burnt and unburnt. However, just a pardon that we could not be able to fully rely on this. This is because we noticed that areas that were classified as unburnt areas that were classified as burnt in Landsat 8 when you look at the images especially those areas that are outside the fire perimeter zone some of them are buildings and are classified as burnt this is because of maybe the coloring of the rooftops and so those are the things one should consider and an alternative way we could advise is use of uh, raw images or use of other types of field data to confirm your analysis and then as we conclude in our conclusion is that we successfully obtained good results for identification of burnt and unburnt scars using both satellite data and optical. The use of L-band, which is ALOS2 in analysis of identification of burnt and burnt was clear and was wonderful. And also we looked at the sensitivity and we realized that when we used radar data, one of the things we cannot fully rely on our results is because some of the areas that were hilly in, opt in radar data, the backscatter intensity was difficult to identify because there were shadows appearing and thus we could not fully rely whether they are burnt or not burnt. Another critical factor was when you look at the polygon around our burnt areas is that it was not really matching the fire perimeter zone and that was because it was collected at the initial stages of the fire when however looking at our fire zones it was collected it was based on post fire analysis so it's also another critical thing that one should look at however when you look at the critical factors one of also another thing that was quite critical in co correcting was the local incidence angle and the acquisition geometry and that would also affect the type of backscatter intensity especially when you're doing classification with reader data however looking at all of those factors and looking at the post fire analysis the timing of the data sets and digitization of the fire perimeter are very very key in the study and that's another thing that really should be looked into however in one of our conclusion we looked at that another possible thing that we have looked at is that both radar and optical can be utilized in forced fire hazard detection last but not least our next immediate states would be like we would like to incorporate in our study is maybe merge both optical and sar to improve our timeliness and accuracy of burnt areas also because we used h alpha decomposition in our classification we'd like to test more composition like cloud and potter decomposition theorem last but not least we'd like to look at ways of improving correction of uh correction of uh, local incidence uncle especially using snap and this will uh, for allows to and this will greatly improve our analysis thank you your questions are welcomed